Hi, and welcome to the August edition of Current and Upcoming Grant Programs for Fruit and Vegetable Farmers. Um, my name is Elizabeth Higgins. I'm an Extension Specialist in Ag Business Management with Cornell Cooperative Extension's Eastern New York Commercial Hort Team. And this month, I'm going to make a bit of a change um, compared to some of the other webinars I've done. Um, I'm just going to focus on one grant this month, which is American Farmland Trust's microgrant program. Um, but I also wanted to let you know that what I have done instead of going through all the possible grants that are available, I've created a Google um, web page, um, and that website is here, sites.google.com backslash a backslash cornell.edu backslash Higgins. Um, and on that Google page are um, as a document grants for New York State fruit and vegetable farms that contains all of the grants um, that I have this month and I update it monthly. Um, and it also contains the PowerPoint slides from this webinar and links to other grant resources. And so this is something that I'll be updating as a sort of ongoing resource on grants and grant availability. So hopefully this format will make the webinars a little bit more efficient and more useful. So, um, and on the document that I've created, and this is something you can download anytime, um, I have all of the applications that are open right now for funding. And then I also have a section on future grants, which are likely to offer funding um, in the future, um, probably within the next 12 months. And because some of these grants are complicated, this gives you a chance to sort of plan ahead so that when they are announced and are available, you'll be ready to, to apply. So with that, let's talk about this month's grant, the Putting Down Roots Farmer Micro Grant. Um, the funder is American Farmland Trust, um, and the amount of the grants are up to 2,500 per project. Um, they think most of the projects will be in the thousand to two thousand dollar range. And these grants are specifically to help you um, hire professional services related to farmland access, transfer, conservation needs. If you're not familiar with American Farmland Trust, um, they are a nonprofit. Um, it's a national nonprofit, but they also have a New York office. And their core mission is to sort of preserve and conserve farmland and keep land in agriculture. So the eligible activities for this type of a grant are you could do things like hire an attorney, an attorney to develop a lease, hire um, a financial or estate planner to help with a transfer plan. Um, to pay transactions costs, maybe like taxes or, or filing fees associated with purchasing a farm or developing a conservation easement, because sometimes these costs can be quite high. Um, and so it's a fairly simple application. Um, it's for fairly straightforward projects. And if you're approved, um, you would get a letter that you are, um, that you've received an award for this specific assistance. One thing that's really important to recognize with this type of grant um, is that if you spend the money before you get written notification from AFT that your project has been approved, um, you may not be reimbursed for your project. So you have to wait until you have that letter and you have that notification. Um, so if you have just um, paid a lawyer, for example, to develop a, a farm lease, but you hadn't applied for this grant, you would not be able to submit, you probably would not be able to submit that um, pay, cost that you've already paid um, for this grant. Um, so you have to also, for this grant, um, you have to have the advisor a, a, approved by AFT. Um, so they want to make sure that you're hiring somebody who's competent to do the work and can complete the project um, and that they, you know, that it's a reasonable project. Um, you have to receive an invoice from the advisor or from the farmer that details what was provided and the cost for the service um, and have some reasonable documentation. Um, and they also have the right to sort of have some demonstration that the project that you proposed has been done. Um, if they approve everything, they will pay within 30 days of after receiving a, an invoice that is satisfactory. Um, they may, um, disperse the money directly to the advisor, so to the lawyer or whoever. Um, so it depends on what you've agreed upon. Um, they Let's say you've applied for $2,000 and the project comes in at $3,000. Um, they won't necessarily, they're under no obligation to pay more than the $2,000 that they agreed to. 
Um, and so any expenses that exceed that maximum um, are likely to be your responsibility. And let's just say you come in under budget. Um, say you, you've proposed a $2,000 project and it, it ends up only costing $1,000. Um, it does not give you the right to automatically go and spend that additional $1,000. It's possible they will let you do something else with it, but you have to have written approval in order to do that. Um, they are taking applications right now for this. Um, so if you've got, if you're right in the middle of a project or you're, there's something that you know you want to do, um, the only caveat is that everything has to be done by December 31st of this year. So all of the services have to be completed by then. Um, and so to apply, um, you would. Can, you would submit a completed application um, to American Farmland Trust, and um, you also are encouraged to call AFT, um, Tim Biello at AFT, to discuss the project and any other questions that you have before applying. Um, and I highly recommend talking to Tim. Um, he can really be quite helpful. Um, the application, I've put the application up on my Google site. So if you go to sites.google.com backslash a backslash cornell.edu backslash Higgins, you'll see a link to the application there under the um, Grants for Fruit and Vegetable Farmers. Um, and then there's other resources there too. But I, I did put the link up there. Or you can contact me or contact Tim to get a copy of that application. So I have a few tips for this one. Um, one thing that I strongly recommend doing is looking at the um, American Farmland Trust has two um, FarmLink websites. If you're in the Hudson Valley, they have HudsonValleyFarmlandFinder.org. And otherwise, if you're in New York State, you should look at NewYorkFarmlandFinder.org websites. And that'll help you get a better sense of resources and tools that are available to farmers looking to acquire or transition farmland. Um, because this micro grant isn't going to do the entire job for most projects. The other reason to look at these ahead of time is because there's specifically a question on the application, have you looked at these websites? And you know the fact that you've actually gone and you've done some research about sort of the process and tools, I think would give you an advantage when you apply. Um, you definitely have to have a clear need for something that can definitely be done by December. Um, so other examples of projects could be that I know a lot of families that are um, in the midst of transition planning, a lot of times it's hard to come to agreement or to have a, a good family discussion to lay out a plan. You could hire a facilitator for that and have a, you know, a family meeting. Um, in a New York, there is a... Um, an ag facilitation um, services um, and or a farm net also could be have, offer facilitation for this type of thing and, and sometimes they have fees and um, you know so that's something that you could do um, an appraisal um, if you're doing any type of um, sale or purchase or whatever um, appraisal fees can sometimes be a barrier or be quite high. Um, I know I just did an appraisal on my house and it was over $400. So that's something to look at. Um, yeah, another thing I definitely recommend is call Tim um, Biello with the American Farmland Trust to discuss your project. Um, his phone number is also available on that Hudson Valley Farmland Finder website. Um, he um, is made, he's involved in making decisions about these grants, but he can also help link you to other assistants. Um, it helps make him aware of your project. He might be able to recommend an advisor for you. Um, so definitely call him. It would be if you're going to apply for these grants, you'd be foolish not to. And whatever you do, don't spend any money that hasn't been approved in writing and expected to get reimbursed. So if you know that you want to. Um, Hire a lawyer, for example, like you're in the midst of trying to find farmland or to um, work out an agreement with somebody. If you can delay it a little bit and apply for these funds, you know, and have sort of the project ready to go um, and, and, you know, you're willing to wait and talk to Tim, you know, you might be able to get this that, that funded, um, but if you spend the money up front, you, you certainly, almost certainly won't get reimbursed um, without approval. So call Tim, give him your time horizon, see whether it's a, a project that will work, um, but don't do the project and then apply because that would be um, a likely recipe for being unhappy. So with that, um, I guess that's this month's. Um, 
once again, look at the Google site, um, sites.google.com backslash a backslash cornell.edu backslash Higgins. Um, this webinar will be loaded on our YouTube site and there'll be a link there for that. Um, this PowerPoint is actually already up and the um, list of other grants is also already up on that website. So hopefully that will be helpful to you going forward too. Thanks. <laughs>